Film directing. Hey, it's me, Nicole Russell McFarland. You know this is going to be mine. It's film directing. Okay. My lesson before a talent agent direct movies. Well, first of all, you're never going to want to ask anybody at any level of fame to help you unless you're already really good friends with that person. And I don't mean just launching with them. You better be tied to the hip with super glue to that person because people don't pull favors for anyone because their names are on the lines. I mean, what if they get in trouble? What if you say something stupid to an agent and it looks bad on them and, and that agent feels sour, okay? Yeah, everyone knows you need an agent and more specifically an agent in one of the right major Hollywood agencies too. So if you present yourself as not knowing this, you look foolish. You're supposed to be that go-getter. You know everything about making it in Hollywood, right? Because you've researched everything. You've read about every director in every movie of his or hers. You know, you're like, you know everything. And instead, you just look stupid. You look like a tourist asking where's Batman's house. You know, like, you're supposed to be obsessed with plotting your future because all you care about is making it as a filmmaker. And the film industry is the one profession where you don't ask people for work. An agent does it. You should know that, but you don't. You're asking that director you just met at a party. You know, like, whoever your favorite director is Tim Burton whoever um my favorite director is Peter Jackson so you know say Mr. Jackson like nice to meet you can you do this for me I really need an agent you think he's gonna be nice about that no okay like the day I meet him he lives in New Zealand like how am I ever gonna meet him but you know if I ask Peter Jackson about anything it's not going to be that because I will never talk to him again. You automatically alienate anyone you meet in the film industry because that person knows you don't want to be friends. You want something. And actually, the truth of the matter is I wouldn't want to just alienate Mr. Jackson because I, and he's my favorite director because he's a businessman. He and Hans are my favorite businessmen in Hollywood. Okay, so, you know, like what, what am I going to gain from that? Like making him mad? Instead of me asking him about all the beautiful things that he's done in life or things I can learn or lessons. No, you're asking that. That's awful. You want something. You're like those people who call you from the doctor's office. Like, you know, they always have these voices that are like really squeaky. Okay. This is Megan from Dr. Lala La, Dr. Dr. Lala La, La, Yeah. Dr. Lala La La's office. Do you want to book a follow-up appointment? And you're like, no. This is why I use a voicemail so I don't have to answer your phone calls. And that used to be my life before, I, before voicemails came out, digital tech with that. And I used to get so mad. I know I need a follow-up appointment. Well, that's what you're doing to people, your favorite film directors. Don't do that. Don't do it to anybody. Okay, don't do it to me. I'm not, you know, like triple Oscar nominated or anything, but don't do it to me. What you need to be doing is befriending people and learning from them because you will learn a lot. Five minutes one-on-one -on -one with a successful person is like a semester of knowledge. Oh, and if you get really lucky with an hour every so often, it blows your mind. It's like knowledge spilling on your forehead like rain or hailstorm and you go from you know not knowing anything for months at a time and then all this knowledge falls on your head it's amazing you want that okay acting like this when you run around and you ask people produce my screenplay or get me an agent whatever you look stupid but it also means you aren't one of them so imagine this like sitting at the mean girls table and regina george is checking that you didn't wear pink on wednesday Maybe right now you aren't holding up your best director Oscar, but you can always be one of them as a newcomer at the Mean Girls school lunch table if you fit in. And you can't actually talk to film directors as a film director unless you have directed something. Yeah. Can you be a film director who's never made a movie? No. Well, I'd like to. Yeah. You're not a film director. Sorry. So you need to direct something or you can't hang with the film directors. You can't talk to them. You can't get their mail. You can't pick up lint off their hats. <laughs> yeah. No, they're not that mean, but you know what I'm trying to say. If you want to be one of them, you need to start with directing or you can't sit with them. You can't sit with us, like Regina George would say. Okay. Second section. 
studios care about making money. Oh, you didn't know this. Well, you know, it's a lovely goal to be like, you don't care about money, but you kind of need money. <laughs> so try existing without money, particularly if you have a chronic illness. See how well it goes for you. Would you gamble on a sports team without players who have never seen playing that sport? Because studios are not going to gamble money on a new film director unless the person is already an A-lister. And if you aren't already a big deal actor like the next Bradley Cooper, you can't slide into directing a big studio film. Beyond knowing if you are good, they don't know if you're serious or reliable. Oh yeah, you're not an A-lister? That's what I thought. Okay, continue. A film festival. Well, you know, that's always a great idea. But film festival success stories do not guarantee you will find an agent and direct for studios. Don't believe me? Look up at the many, many names on film festival rosters. And not everyone gets this kind of success. I mean, there are people who've won awards at Sundance. And for some people, it opens doors. And for others, it's just like, okay, let's clean up this room. She's done giving her speech. Um, yeah, hey lady, you need to leave the room because the janitor's here. That's, okay, that's the attitude people have. There are no guarantees in this world. Festival judges are very often your own peers who had past success showing their movies at film festivals or teaching screenwriting workshops. They're amazing, nice people, but they're not people from studios. And they're not agents. Occasionally, there are some studio executives, but you're not going to really get to know them that well during a festival. You can meet them and establish a relationship. That's absolutely true. And that's why some people go to festivals, but you're not going to be guaranteed that. There are no guarantees in life. So studios want to know, what are you doing? Are you actively promoting your work? Whether it's a $50,000 budget period drama or a shoestring budget three-minute short about your best friend's eating leftover Chinese food in the dorm room. You need to be promoting that big time because, listen, if you are a film director and you don't promote your work, nobody ever hears of it. Not only will they not hear of you, but the studio is going to be like, how is he or she going to promote this into a hit? We want directors. It doesn't matter how shy they are, how ugly they are, how stupid they are. We want people who promote their work. Well, hopefully they don't think you're stupid, but, you know, if they do... Hopefully they pay you a solid payday, you know? <laughs> hey, you know, like, hey, Paramount, you're welcome to think I'm stupid if you pay me well. Because <laughs> I won't be so stupid after all, right? I convinced you I'm stupid and I'm promoting movies. No, I mean, it's like half a joke. I mean, it doesn't, it, that's one of those scenarios where it doesn't really matter what people think of you if you're stupid, if they think you're stupid, if you're making serious bank. I don't think so. That's amazing, like... You're able to make money. <laughs> Many people don't. To demonstrate that you are a working film director, or at least you will be, start with having a handful of IMDb credits to your name. It is more impressive that someone can whip out a film out of nowhere with a little budget than waiting one year between films for crowdfunding, or some people wait more. While hiring a large crew is tempting, try to do everything yourself in at least your first one or two films to demonstrate to studios, I actually care about this profession. And I'm willing to learn everything about it. So my favorite dude, Peter Jackson, did this a lot. Have you ever seen Meet the Feebles? Um, you have to. It's on YouTube right now. I think it's a bootleg. I'm not going to sing the song because I think there's a copyright on it. But I would because it's, it's it's ridiculous. And then there's a fly who gets his wing ripped off in it. And he says, I don't remember which it was the right or the left. But the, the, then the guy says, you're just a right wing journalist. Yeah, I mean, it's it's so goofy. But Peter Jackson was so heavily involved in the special effects aspects of his early films. And look how that worked out for him, right? You learn everything. You learn about lighting. You should act in them. Peter Jackson acted in Bad Taste. Can you tell I'm like a groupie of Peter Jackson? I'm like of his business savvy. Look, I mean, Peter Jackson can be like... <laughs> Last weekend, I ate a taco... And it had mustard with two drops of honey. I'll be like, that's good. But anyway, 
that's what you should do. And I hope it makes all your dreams come true and that, you know, always direct, always prove to people that you were right. Oh, but wait, there was more as seen on TV. Oh, do you remember when people did that? Okay. That's not how I'm going to wrap up this episode. Following your dreams. No. There is a fad going on that I think it's going to stick around. And that is studios hiring people who are white. <laughs> yeah. Writer directors. Are you a writer director? Well, you probably are. And if you want to read about this, you can. Conf- there's a bunch on Google you can confirm. Um, they want directors who write their own material. And there are different reasons for it, but you can read what they are. And by writing and directing a handful or more of projects credited to your name, you show studios that you can do it on a larger scale. And they're not going to give you like Avengers Endgame, but they are going to start up with your increments like, okay, what if this Nicole person, me, I'm talking about me. Okay, so I'm going to jump up here to studio. What am I going to get? Well, let's give her a low budget cartoon. Low budget by our standards. So, ah, 10 million if you're if I'm lucky or whatever. 2 million, I don't care. Something like that. Okay, what about that? She did really well. Oh, let's step it up. She could direct a 30 million dollar movie. Oh, she's doing really well. And then you go and go and go, and then you get your Avengers get endgame. That's usually how it is for most people. It's not instant. Okay, you don't want to be inexperienced and lucky where the studio hires you as a director then asks you to write a screenplay and you don't know what to do. Every screenplay you write and direct, as simple as it may be in its plot, helps you gain the proper experience. And finally, an agent is more likely to take you on, whether you get representation through a referral or a cold call, if you are a writer or director, because that's the fad and the agent needs money too. you think that people wouldn't do that, right? But they do. They need writer directors, so... That's it. That's all, folks, to quote Porky the Pig for this lesson. I hope that this enriches you enough. And please stop sliding underneath people's bathroom stalls to ask them about producing your film. Okay, guys? Kidding. Hopefully you haven't done that.